All right, hi everyone, Bjork from Benedictson from Audio Issues here, author of Step-by-Step -Step Mixing, here again, once again, with a step-by-step -step mixing tutorial. This time we are continuing on our journey of mixing this hip-hop track. Last time we finished with getting the beat sounding a little bit uh, punchier, tighter, a little bit bigger. Uh, I added two, actually, after I, <laughs> after I finished the last video, I added another parallel compressor using the CLA mix down which um, I'm experimenting with I'm gonna leave it in there uh, it was it added a little forwardness to the beat in general but now I'm going to add the synths in and as you know if you've been following since the start we have these three synth patches here that sound like this in solo So adding that to, I'm just trying to mix this into a really powerful beat and then I'm gonna put the vocal into the mix because I feel like that might be helpful for a lot of you that are working with just two track beats and then you fit the need to fit the vocal into the beat. That might um, prove to be a challenge later on uh, because I'm not mixing everything uh, in context. I'm not mixing, I'm mixing a, lo a lot in solo which isn't necessarily always the best way to go about it but I feel like it might be the best way to learn. So. Uh, let's add that in. It has the 808 and the parallel bass. Actually, let's just mute the vocals. It's easier than to keep soloing stuff. So this is what we have at the moment. So nothing on the mix bus is getting uh, overloaded in in any way, really. Uh, just a little bit of gain reduction here on these on these two mix bus compressors. Doing that in serial just because I wanted to use both of them. Uh, and so let's see. I feel like the snare is um, you know has a, a different space than the rest of the mix. That could be cool. Not sure about it. Uh, but I'm gonna add. I'm gonna s basically mix add in some of the some of the plugins that I have here on the synths just to get them sounding um, big and bright and then adding them into the rest of the drums. So let's look at it. Uh, give me a few minutes to sort of get things going and see uh, what how we can put this all together. So that just added 5 dB of gain. So I want to make sure that sounds actually better. If we add some spread.
Okay, obviously this is these are adding a lot of volume uh, because I'm boosting a few things here and there, but I think it's definitely sounding better. Uh, I love these these channel strip plugins because they add some random color to them. I don't like the compression model module on the TG12345, but so I just I put a transparent compressor two to one ratio, uh, medium attack, fast ish release, and um, just compressing a little bit there and not sure if I need to add a lot more there uh, on the on the inserts I could go down and see if there are particular frequencies that I can boost on the synths in general just to create some separation because there's one on the left one on the right and one in the middle the strings are in the middle so let's uh, let's play around with it a little bit more So I'm, I'm thinking and putting the strings, really trying to focus them in the mids, in the middle frequencies, in, in the mids of the middle frequencies. So that's why there's a boost at, you know, 700. That's why I'm pushing this middle frequency up here in the on the vitamin, because the kick and the 808 are in the lows. There. I might add some extra additional warmth here in in the low end in the low mids on the on the um, synths too, but might that might not be necessary. And then you have the hats that are on the highs, and then the vocals are gonna be very prominent, very dominant in the high mids there. So this is um, getting pretty pretty close to how I want to have it at the moment. Uh, they all have you know all these patches are pretty good in general so they don't necessarily need a lot of reverb you can hear the reverb and the space and stuff like that on these patches and i don't want to step on the producer's toes too much you know i don't want to transform those those things too much uh i don't need to add more reverb or different reverb in general to it but i might want to see if there is a way for me to add some you know have each individual synth patch jump out of the mix in a particular frequency so i'm going to find one frequency in each one to boost and see if that makes sense <laughs> So I picked some frequencies. I feel like everything is super audible. I can hear everything really well. It's clean. Uh, might not be what everybody's always looking for. You might want a more of a wall of sound feel, but this is what I came up with. A little extra 390 here, a little extra uh, 9, I think, 9K, and then a little extra both 800 and 10K. And then I was getting loud, so I reduced the level of the fader, but I also made sure to check in case um, it was compressing too hard on the compressor that was going through it. 
because we only have the one compressor here. Well, the vitamin's compressing this. It's about, it's like a multi-band compressor, saturator EQ or whatever, uh, but I'm not too worried about that. So it's sounding pretty good at the moment. Let's check it out with everything else. Alright, so hope that found that useful. I think we've we've got the the synth parts or the harmonic bed, if you wanna call it like that. That's this is sort of the third element of the mix. We had the beat, we had the bass and the eight oh eight low end foundation there, and then we have the harmonic bed, which are the string parts, and then all we've left to do is add the vocals, some parallel processing in general, just to increase power and and uh, loudness in general without <laughs> squashing the mix as it goes through my uh, mix bus and master bus there. Uh, so we're going to look at that in the next videos. Hope you found this one useful. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I'm doing. Uh, I'd, I love, I'd love to get your feedback on, on this stuff. And if there's anything that's unclear as I'm working my way through it, uh, it's a little challenging to make sure that you're always explaining everything as well as you should because sometimes mixing becomes this um, flow state where you just sort of move from one thing to other you keep hearing things you're like oh i'm gonna go check things out there uh, is can i tweak the compression compression here da, 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 because you're slowly building a tight punchy powerful song uh, and a record out of a bunch of tracks so they all have to sort of fit together and play nice and throughout the mixing process you're always double checking all, that all the wires are <laughs> where they're supposed to be so hope you found that useful let me know if there's anything else uh, you want from me uh, let me know what uh, genre you think i should tackle next and i'll put that on the docket and uh, if you want more from me, go to mixfinisher.com and download your Mix Finisher cheat sheet that helps you get your mixes sounding great on every speaker system. And if you want a copy of the step-by-step -step mixing book, go to stepbystepmixing.com and get your copy there. All right, I'm Bjorkman from Audio Issues. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.